Hey everyone, Griff Hamlin here from Blues Guitar Unleashed. Welcome and thanks for joining me today. Uh, in today's video, I want to talk to you uh, specifically for uh, beginners having a hard time making chord changes. Okay, so uh, I want to show you some tricks uh, and some things that you can do. I, I kind of like to separate your practice time into like, you know, practice and game day. Sometimes you want to practice and sometimes you, you know, you want to try to improve on playing a certain chord sound. Other times you want to play the song and there might be certain chords or certain ideas. You might have 90% of a song done, but there's that one chord that trips you up or that one element of something that, that trips you up. So I want to try and give you some ideas today on ways that you can sort of maybe work around it for the purpose of getting through a tune, <laughs> right? So you don't have to slow down in that one spot. So what I'm using as my, I'll say my guinea pig, um, this was sent to me by a student, so it kind of worked out, um, is this is an uh, F major seven chord. So it has a pinky on the F at the eighth fret of the uh, fifth string. Third finger is on the A of the seventh fret of the fourth string and my first finger bars across the top three strings on the fifth fret. Okay, so that's a little bit of a challenge. It's a little bit of a comp complex chord. Okay, the next chord is an E7 sharp nine. So in case you don't know that one, uh, seventh fret on the fifth string, sixth fret on the fourth string, seventh fret on the third string, Pinkies at the eighth fret of the second string. And then it's an A minor seven, which is a, a bar at the fifth fret across all six strings, and I just add my third finger to the seventh fret on the fifth string. Just like that, okay? So it's F major seven, E seven sharp nine, A minor seven, and then a quick E seven sharp nine again at the end. Okay, so that could be a little bit of a challenge, right? Uh, the A minor seven is a, is a pretty difficult bar. You're playing almost every string just with the bar. The F major seven, it's kind of turned around backwards. It's just kind of an unusual shape. It's not something that we do all the time on a guitar. And then going from that F major seven to the E seven sharp nine kind of requires that I turn my hand completely around to, to get to it. So that could really, that could definitely trip you up, right? So let's talk about some ideas. The main thing that you want to look at is first, how can you make that chord a little bit smaller? Right? So how could I make it so that I could play this chord more easily? And so what I would do is I would, in this case, I would start from the top. Just maybe getting that top part. Now I'm assuming that in the case of, of the exercise or the lesson that this goes with, I happen to know because I wrote the lesson. It's in my Blues Guitar Unleashed course. But in that lesson there is a backing track to play with. Which means that, that you can count on uh, a little bass, right? There's some bass and drums and stuff going on. So you don't have to fill in the low end. The bass is going to handle it on the track. So in that case, I might just start with that bar, just getting that much because the, the band will handle the rest. When you get good at that, then you might add in the one extra note on the fourth string. When you get to where you can do that, then you'd add in the note on the fifth string. Okay? Uh, and another thing that you could do, let's say you were, uh, let's say you were carrying it, right? There is, let's say there was no band behind you and you do have to sort of carry the whole thing on your own. In that case, I would start from the other end. I would try to get the low end of the chord. Okay, so I would try to get at least my, I would put my pinky and, and third finger down first and even if I get nothing from the top, that's okay. As I get better at it, I'll start to add in maybe just the third string and then maybe I'll get more of that bar later on. But to start with, I'd at least try to get those bottom two notes. And even if I don't get the rest, it's gonna sound okay. It may not sound perfect, obviously, but at least it's gonna sound okay and it's gonna get me through. It's gonna get you through a song until you can improve upon it a little bit more, all right? And then from there, let's say I was going to the E7 sharp nine, 
okay? Well, I can do the same thing here. If the band is, is playing and you don't need as much out of me, I might just get those top couple of notes, okay? In almost any, I'll say tall chord, we have, regu we have triad chords, small chords, major, minor, diminished and augmented. And then we have tall chords, things like sevenths, ninths, elevenths, and thirteenths, okay? And, the, and the, the term tall refers to the fact that if you look at them on a staff, they get taller and taller and taller, okay? So on those tall chords, things like seventh chords or ninth chords or stuff with sharp, sharp nine, flat this, flat the other, all that kind of stuff, those chords, the color tones, if you will, the tones that are going to make it sound the most like that chord are going to be towards the top, okay? So in an E7 sharp 9, the 7 and the sharp 9 are those top two notes. So those are the two that I really want to get, okay? Again, if the band is going on. Now, if the band is not going on, then I'm really going to need the bass note. So I would try to get just the bass note and maybe at least one or two of those top notes. And my first finger is just going to kind of hang behind until I get to the point that I can actually push down with it. But I'm not going to worry about it at first. I'm just going to try to get maybe two of the notes, at least the root and my third finger, and then try to get my pinky in there as I get better at it. But I'm going to build that chord slowly. Right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with two of the notes, in the case if there's no band, the bass note plus maybe one of the upper notes. Um, and the way that I'm doing that, again, is just by keeping some of these other fingers, they're in place, sort of. Right? So right now, when I strum, I get a mute, a note, a mute, a note, a mute, and a mute. Right? I get a lot of, a lot of nothing. <laughs> But as I get better, I might be able to get three of the notes and then eventually I get all four, right? And, and of course, uh, again, if the, if the band is playing behind you, all I need is those top two and that makes it easy, okay? So don't be afraid to sort of lean on the backing track if you have that available to you. It's a, it's a great thing. And then of course I could do the same thing, you know, if, if I have to play that A minor seven, I'll go for the lower notes. If there's no band, I'll go for the upper notes there is a band, right? And just let it build in. There's no reason that I have to, uh, there's no reason that I have to play the whole chord every time. I can oftentimes get away with just a little bit of it. And, uh, and you can experiment too with which strings sound the best to your ear. You might find that there's just a couple of strings that you really need to get the sound and the rest of it will come in time. And it will come in time. Obviously, you're not going to abandon these chords forever. You're just trying to make it so that when you have to play the song and you have to get through it and you have to get through it in time, you can. Maybe it's not perfect, but it, it gets you through it and, it and it gives you some confidence so that you can move on. Because a lot of times there's just one thing that trips you up, but it's just this one thing and it shouldn't stop your progress entirely. All right, now one other thing that you can do is instead of, let's say you have to strum a chord all at once, right? And that might be really hard, but if you were to break it up like that, okay? So I just play the first note at first, and then I sort of put the next note in, and then I add the bar. So sometimes arpeggiating a chord or bringing it in slowly and all I'm doing is just playing eighth notes. One and two and three and four and one and two and three instead of two, three, four, one. Right, I could one, two, and three. Okay, so just a few ideas, some things that hopefully will make it so that, you know, you could get through a tune that you might not otherwise get through, okay? So hope you enjoyed this video and uh, got something out of it. If you did, 
feel free to share it with a friend. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.